Hey you guys, hope you're doing well today. Now I really wanted to just get started on today's topic. If you haven't seen the last two episodes of this little series on body image, definitely check those out because you'll get more of my story and where I'm coming from with a lot of things in this video and they're really meant to all be watched, you know, around the same time frame. I've made a video talking about femininity and I've also made a video talking about food and your body. This video is alongside those two talking about self-perception as it relates to body typing. Some of the most interesting comments that I get are from people who have either tried on, so to speak, various different body types only to figure out that they were something else. A lot of people tell me that it took them forever to figure out their body type and really all they just needed was somebody else's perspective. We see ourselves one way and sometimes it's really interesting to see how other people see us and how that can affect the way that we dress. Essentially, sometimes the recommendations of others and the perception of others can be more accurate than the way you see yourself. And I kind of want to get into that in this video because a lot of people who have just started following my fashion and style journey channel here on YouTube, thank you, first of all, for being here with me. But a lot of you see me the way I look now or the way I looked like a year ago. So basically, you haven't seen all of the ways that I've seen myself growing up. Your, you go through puberty, your body changes, your skin changes, your hair texture can even change with the ways your hormones change and the foods that you eat. You tend to change very rapidly. A lot of times you just wake up and you have boobs or you wake up and all of a sudden your clothes aren't fitting right and you have hips or something. Or you wake up and your skin is like oily and you have like this oil slick of a face. Like I just remember there was a time where I was a kid and then all of a sudden things like immediately shifted where I couldn't do the same things that I used to, I couldn't sit the same way that I once did, I couldn't wear my favorite shirt that I loved so much, I couldn't wear a certain length of shorts anymore, like there was something that has changed. I still carry some of that weight, that baggage during from that season because it was such a formative time in my life as it is for all children who are going through that prepubescent to pubescent stage of life. People will hold on to the things that they believed about themselves during that awkward season. A lot of times people don't look like that anymore, but it gets stuck in your head. How does this affect the way you type yourself? For example, if you're trying to take the Kibbe test, which you know, may or may not be the most accurate way to figure out your type. It can definitely help you narrow it down and kind of get a feel for your yin-yang balance. But like I was saying, say you're taking the Kibbe test and you're looking at your face and you're like, I have really beady eyes and my nose is really cute and small and my lips are really thin. And you get one group of answers on your test. But then someone comes in and says, Why'd you, why'd you answer that one for that? Because I definitely think you have really huge eyes, but your nose is more prominent. You know, it's stuff like that that makes you go like, oh, like, ooh, like, really? Because I was over here typing myself and I thought that I was soft classic, but it turns out that I'm flamboyant gamine, which are like practically opposites. So what do you do to combat that if you see yourself one way and other people see you another way? and it really causes you to doubt what clothes look good on you or which fashion recommendations you should take. So here's something that I want to talk to you about first. This might sound crazy, but spend time by yourself naked. <laughs> oh my god, I feel like a 12 year old. Seriously though, like just before you take a shower, just look at yourself in the mirror, find three things you love about yourself. Just three. Start there. And if you have a hard time thinking about it, like think about maybe what do people tend to compliment on you. So for example, like I get lots of compliments on my hair. People just love my hair. And that isn't something that I necessarily 
felt confident about at one point. Like I used to straighten my hair. I hated my curls. I really wanted just like long, luscious, flowing hair because I thought that curly hair was not feminine or like my texture of curly hair was not feminine. It wasn't beautiful. That has to do with a lot of other things that I won't get into, but they're very relevant in this time, especially like Black Lives Matter and being biracial personally and Maybe I'll make a separate video about that when I gather the courage. If you want to hear about my experience there, definitely comment down below. Or if you've experienced something similar with your curly hair, especially if it's leaning more to like type 4 curls, low porosity curls, afro textured hair, black hair, I would love to hear your experience there because that also is a, a question on the Kibbe test is about hair texture and how interesting I you know what I am gonna make a video on this topic I think that is so relevant to talk about it I just got really whipped up <laughs> so you know back to what I was saying though find one thing that you love about yourself maybe it's something that gets a lot of compliments about you so maybe somebody always tells you your eyes are so beautiful the most important thing for you to do if you're trying to figure out what body type you have it's to retrain your brain to see beauty to retrain your brain to say, I am beautiful and I love you the way you are to yourself, to your body. A good way to do this is, you know, take, right before you take a shower or a bath or something, whatever you do, stand in the mirror, stand there, maybe just in, you know, a bra and underwear, maybe naked, whatever, and just look at yourself and smile. This, this is going to start sounding so stupid, but Seriously, just look at yourself, smile, and say, I love you. Whisper it. Only speak kind things about yourself. No more with the negative self-talk. Like, you are a stunning human being. I think it's important to practice telling yourself that. And it will change the way you see your body. The second thing I want to tell you to try is go and consult somebody that you trust and ask them to speak honestly about your body. Do it in a way where it's, that the room is filled with compassion and gentleness, a deep respect for you, because it can be very daunting to have somebody tell you what they perceive your body to look like and what features you have. Like for me, I think I mentioned this in my intro video to this series, but I remember sitting on the bed my husband and I were together and we were both taking the Kibbe test after seeing Ali Art's videos. I have since then taken the test again and I think gotten different answers because I see myself with more compassion and more love now. But during that time, the way that the language is for the Kibbe test, I did not want to be flamboyant and mean. Especially didn't see myself as small. Like I always thought I was bigger than I was. But then, of course, you put me next to other people. I tend to look very tiny next to them. So anyway, the descriptors that they were using for flamboyant gamine did not resonate with me in the slightest. But as I was answering the test, I was getting those extremes. And I was like, no, they aren't really extremes. They are like types. They're answer C. They're classic stuff. I wanted to be a classic type because that's what I believed was beautiful. Nothing about flamboyant gamine seemed beautiful to me. Not to mention that there are barely any people of color as references for flamboyant gamine. I want to try and compile a list of flamboyant gamines who are also women of color. The ones that are like the main stars of flamboyant gamine are like Audrey Hepburn and Twiggy and you know, Liza Minnelli. I guess we have Tina Turner, but I didn't look like her, so I didn't feel like I really was represented in my category at all. And so after taking the test, I said, you know, Kelly, I think I might be um, like dramatic classic or something. And he looks at me and he's kind of like, no. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, no, I think you're, you're probably a gamine. He said, I think you're probably more like a, one of those flamboyant gamines, just kind of really small and narrow and not super curvy and not very tall. I was like a little disappointed because I didn't see myself that way, nor did I see that as beautiful. And it took me a long time. Like I started watching a lot of Audrey Hepburn movies and seeing her in motion and thinking, okay, yeah, I guess I can see. I can see how that would be beautiful. And like retraining my brain to see 
beauty where I once did not see beauty like that. But it took somebody else that I trust and someone who loves me. He's attracted to me, so obviously he thinks that there's something beautiful about my body as well um, and my essence and who I am. He told me, you know, I was flamboyant to me, and I was kind of like, well, you might be right. And then the more I dug into it and the more I started dressing for that style, I was like, oh, that makes sense. Okay, I do look really good in these lines, in something more fitted, in something shorter, in something maybe a little bit more masculine leaning more like a blazer, less like a cardigan kind of a thing. Even though I love wearing cardigans, that was one of the things that I I just didn't realize about myself. And it took somebody else's perception to help me understand that. The way I actually look, my shoulders sharp, my bones bony, my arms lanky, that that was beautiful. And that was really hard for me to grasp. And it was hard for me to see that in myself as well. <laughs> that can help you out quite a bit. Those are my recommendations for you who are struggling with self-perception and having that affect what clothing you think you should wear. When taking these tests or trying to figure out your body type at all, it's really important for you to look at yourself with compassion rather than trying to just nitpick and pull apart and figure out which category your body parts fit into. That's get, that becomes exhausting and it can lead to the wrong conclusion about yourself and then you're wearing style recommendations that still don't feel right to you and it just turns into this whole mess and you give up and you're just like forget it I'm just not naturally stylish like I just don't understand how to do this. I want to encourage you guys to start with love, start with self-respect and dignity, then enter into the clothing. Your style choices and finding your personal style really does emerge when you are honest with yourself and how you look and honest about the things that you're drawn to, you know? I really, at one point, wanted to wear frilly and girly things. But in reality, like the things that I was, I'm really drawn to are more androgynous, more masculine. <laughs> I put it in quotes, you can see my other video about what femininity means to me. I'll have it linked for you in the corner. Yeah. I think that's all I wanted to say though. I hope you found this helpful. If you do any journaling or anything like that, write down all of the things that you believe about yourself. Don't worry about categorizing it as positive or negative or truth or lie or anything like that. Just write down what you think immediately when you look at yourself. Read it out loud to yourself in the mirror. And if it leaves you feeling deflated and heavy, find something else to say to yourself that would make you feel uplifted and light. For example, if you are sitting there and you should always just think, I hate my hair, it looks so ugly, take a second and say, okay, I'm gonna flip this. Opposite of this, I, my hair is beautiful. My hair is so versatile. It is so large and in charge. I can love my hair the way it is. And tell yourself, you know, what can I do to change this narrative about myself and turn it into something that gives life. See where it came from. Figure out who told you this. Like, who, whose voice is that? Who's being the one that's critical in your mind? Because a lot of times it's based off of something we've seen on a show, in media, something your parents told you, your siblings people who were pretending to be your friends but weren't really because they were constantly berating you. Like, a lot of times it comes from an external source and not from the true being that is living in you, like your true self. I would just keep that in mind, and that's a very practical exercise that you can do to start the style journey, is to start with yourself and what parts of you are you constantly tearing apart. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh. Uh, I need to breathe. <laughs> Thank you so much for sitting with me and hanging out with me. This video was definitely more of a of a ramp, a ramble, a rant, uh, but hopefully one that you found helpful in you know dealing with some negative self perception and hopefully you know as you grow to love yourself, you'll be able to take some style recommendations from 
yourself based off of your intuition and what you're drawn to, as well as, you know, channels like mine where I try and teach you about your personal style and how to dress in a way that honors your body. Thank you again for watching, for hanging out with me. You are a stunning individual. You are so incredible and I am grateful to be interacting with you regularly. <laughs> I hope you guys have a great week or weekend or whenever you're watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.